Hello ninjas, Dennis is here. In this module, we will practice finding and fixing performance issues in applications that are bound by memory accesses. Let's start with saying a few words about what does it mean for application to be bound by memory. Modern CPUs execute instructions very fast. This animation illustrates what happens when a CPU needs some data to work on and the request goes all the way down to the main memory. Well, in the worst case scenario, such a request can take up to 1000 CPU cycles. In the meantime, the CPU can easily perform 1000 integer additions while waiting for their data. This could happen to any application. When a program executes a large number of memory accesses and spends significant time waiting for them to finish, such a workload is characterized as being bound by memory. To improve performance of such an application, we need to improve the way we access memory, reduce the number of such accesses, or upgrade the memory subsystem itself. But the main point here is that the memory subsystem is very important for software performance. And elaborating more on that point, I'm showing you this chart which illustrates the growth of the gap in performance between memory and processors. The vertical axis is on a logarithmic scale and shows the growth of the CPU DRAM performance gap. Typical DRAM performance improvement is about 7% per year, while CPUs enjoy much bigger 20-50% to improvements per year and the gap is growing. This chart is a little dated, but the gap between the CPU and memory performance only increases. Remember that CPUs execute instructions really fast. So, in order to maximize the utilization of the CPU computing capabilities, it needs to be fed with the right data at the right time. This is the motivation for caching the data and introduce additional layers in the memory hierarchy. It is organized as a hierarchy of small and fast storage blocks closest to the CPU units like L1, backed up by larger slower blocks like L3. In a typical modern CPU, we usually have three levels of caches, like shown on the picture. Some levels of the memory hierarchy can be private to a particular CPU, like L1, while other levels can be shared among CPUs, like L2. A particular level of the cache hierarchy can be used exclusively for code or for data, or it can be shared between code and data. For example, usually we have L1 level cache for instructions and a separate L1 for data which do not interfere with each other. And typically L2 and L3 caches are unified, meaning that they store a mix of cached instructions and data. On this diagram, you can see the memory request goes from the CPU and it misses in all levels of caches. We load the data from the main memory and save it in L1 cache so that the next time we need that data, it is available and can be accessed quickly. We don't have to read that piece of data again from the main memory, which can be very slow. And so the whole idea for having CPU caches is built around the fact that most programs exhibit the property of locality. In other words, they don't access data randomly. That's why CPU memory hierarchy is built on two fundamental properties, temporal and spatial locality. Temporal locality means that when the given memory location was accessed, it is likely that the same location will be accessed again in the near future. This diagram illustrates what happens in a cache when a program accesses some memory locations. Every time you read some variable from the memory, it's getting cached and lights up, but then as the time passes, it grows dimmer and dimmer and suddenly the data gets evicted from the cache until the program accesses the same data again. Now compare it with the second scenario, when the variable is in the cache every time we access it. Ideally, we want some frequently accessed variables in the program to always be in the cache the next time we need it. So that's temporal locality. Typical techniques to exploit temporal locality is to split the working set into smaller chunks and work on it so that it fits in the cache and only then move to the next chunk. And another fundamental property is special locality, which means that when a given memory location was accessed, it is likely that nearby locations are accessed in the near future. When the program reads a single byte from memory, 
Typically, a CPU fetches a larger chunk of memory called the cache line. Well, because very often the program will require the data soon. An array is the best example of a data structure which exploits the special locality. Because when we iterate over an, ar an array, we access its elements sequentially. On the other hand, linked list does not exploit the special locality. Because every time we need next node in the list, we jump to a new location that is potentially allocated far away from the previous one. So to generalize, we need to place related data close to each other to exploit the special locality. So the cache memory hierarchy is based on the notion of special locality and temporal locality, which programs should always try to exploit. Memory-friendly accesses generally involve first, accessing data sequentially, and second, try to avoid pulling the same data from memory multiple times. So that's the two fundamental concepts we need to keep in mind to achieve the best performance. Let's consider a simple example of column major versus row major matrix traversal. This loop iterates over a matrix and writes to each cell the sum of corresponding row and column indices. But it does so in a column major order. In other words, it accesses elements of column A, then column B, then C, and so on. That loop does not perform sequential memory accesses. Now, if we flip the indices, we will transform it to a row major traversal, which in fact will perform sequential accesses, and this code will perform much faster. Ok, so here are some of the topics that we will cover in this module. But in general, memory bound category involves a lot more transformations. You can find more information on any of those topics in the corresponding lab assignment once it will come out. This is it for this video. Now go and check the lab assignments in the memory bound section. See you there.